Well, this Omicron uh, variant has a lot of folks wondering, oh boy, I better get vaccinated. But some who uh, really sort of recoil at the administration's push to mandate such vaccines uh, are actually doubling down on that. And my next guest is seeing it happen in his own state. Tate Reeves is the Republican governor of the beautiful state of Mississippi, kind enough to join us right now. Governor, good to have you. Thanks for having me on, Neil. Always a pleasure. Same here. You know, Governor, how do those in your state who are some resistant to vaccines for a variety of reasons, not the least of which is this push to mandate it, order it, that they might have been, I know in a prior appearance with me, you had said maybe had, had they not so strong-armed it, we'd have stronger vaccination counts. But this is just added to it, hasn't it? Well, well, there's no doubt, and, and Neil, that's been my contention from the beginning. As you well know, I've been a, a proponent of the vaccine. I, I personally uh, took the vaccine. In fact, I took it on Facebook Live um, so that I could tell the, the people of Mississippi that I believe that it's effective, but I also believe in individual freedom and liberty and individuals' ability to make their own choices. And what I would submit to you today is that the administration's push to mandate the vaccine has actually uh, caused, in, in places like our state, uh, people who maybe were on the fence to, to fall off on the, on the wrong side of that decision. And so hopefully, um, as we see this, this variant uh, coming out of South Africa, that we can get more data and have more understanding on exactly what it looks like. I, I don't think we have full information yet, but perhaps that's going to lead more people to make a different decision. Now, I know it's too early to tell, Governor, but uh, since we got news of this Omicron uh, the virus, have, have you seen a, a pickup in vaccinations in your state or people still holding back? Well, we've seen a steady uptick in the overall vaccination rate virtually every single day. We did uh, about 50 or 60,000 shots uh, in the seven days uh, that ended on, on Sunday. Uh, we have over 1.605 million Mississippians that are, have been vaccinated. So that's that's somewhere between 55 and 60 percent. And talking to our uh, public health officials, uh, when you combine that number with the number of people who have um, natural immunity from having either tested positive or, or having had the virus. We think somewhere between 80 to 85 percent of Mississippians have some level of protection, uh, which uh, perhaps is not herd immunity, but it certainly gets us uh, headed in that direction. You know, Neil, where we find ourselves today, and, and, and I've been I've been criticized for this, but I think it's pretty clear that that this virus uh, moves around the country based upon a lot of different things, including uh, weather patterns. Uh, and, and how they affect uh, individual individuals' behavior. But if you look at our state right now, our seven-day moving average in total number of cases is about 225 to 230 cases uh, per day over a seven-day period. Um, that's with about 80,000 in, in the U.S. We're about 1% of the population uh, in the United States. And, and so we're actually, um, if you're in Mississippi, you're about uh, four times less likely to, to contract the virus than you, than you are if you're in the United States as a whole. Governor, while I still have you, the Supreme Court is going to be taking up your Mississippi law that bans abortions after 15 weeks of pregnancy. And given the 6-3 conservative majority on the court, might rule to make that essentially the law of the land. I'm, I'm just wondering, uh, because a number of legal experts have weighed in on this case to say that there's no middle ground. Uh, a clerk for Judge uh, Justice Samuel Alito had said, it's very hard for me to see how the court could uphold the 15-week law, referring to your law in, in Mississippi, without entirely eliminating the constitutional entitlement to elective abortion in Roe v. Wade. What do you think of that? Well, I think there is potentially a, a middle ground but I, the, the point that I would make to you is that there, there is no constitutional right to an abortion in our United States Constitution. I believe very strongly that uh, if you actually simply read the Constitution, you recognize that the, the decision made by the court in Roe in 1973, the court just simply got it wrong. There's no guarantee to an abortion. In, in our U.S. Constitution. But I'd go a step further and tell you uh, that not only is there not a, a guaranteed right, there's also nothing in our United States Constitution that would prevent a state, a state like Mississippi, from implementing and placing reasonable restrictions on abortions. 
And that restriction in your state's case is after 15 weeks, right? Uh, under the statute that is that is being uh, tested at the right. Supreme Court, uh, it is a 15-week ban. And and look, now I want to put this in perspective for your viewers, because the, the folks on the other side of this issue would lead you to believe that this law is is something that is out of the mainstream. Now there are 42 countries in Europe that allow elective abortions. If this becomes law in Mississippi and the court allows it to stand, in 39 of those 42 countries in Europe, they will still have more restrictive abortion laws than will Mississippi. And I would submit that the Mississippi is uh, one of the most, if not the most conservative states in the entire United States, yet 39 countries in Europe would still have more restrictive laws uh, than, than we do. Do you think it will become, and the high court will affirm this, and for the first time, a time period by which you cut off all abortions, putting an actual time to it after 15 weeks? I believe that if the court were to uh, read the United States Constitution, the individual uh, justices would read the Constitution, I think they would recognize that not only was Roe incorrectly decided, but also I believe Casey was incorrectly decided in, in 1992. If you if you read the, the, the actual opinions from 92, it seems uh, very much to me as if um, that particular ruling in Casey was not rooted in constitutional principles, but it was rooted in the perceived political perception at that time uh, with respect to uh, abortions. Right now in America, uh, and this is, and I think you and I can agree that the Gallup is certainly no right wing polling organization, but the most recent Gallup poll on this issue says that only 18% of Democrats in the U.S. believe that abortion ought to be allowable in the third trimester, and fully less than 41% of all Americans believe that abortion should be allowed at any time after the first trimester. And so I think 60 to 70 percent of Americans uh, agree with us on, on this particular issue. Um, and this particular law simply puts Mississippi law uh, more in line with countries around the world and countries in Europe. You look at the abortion laws in, in say, states like New York and California. They are much more in line with the abortion laws in China and North Korea than they are in the mainstream of countries around the world. Well, regardless of where people are in this issue, you're quite right, Governor. It, it could be precedent setting here. What happened in your state and it stands as the law in your state um, that could be picked up by the Supreme Court, gotten a stamp of approval by the Supreme Court and the law of the land in this country. Maybe very soon. We'll be watching it closely. Governor, always a pleasure to have you. Thank